hello and welcome to the channel for today's tutorial i'll be sharing with you how i made this bustier gown with yoke in our previous class i drafted the pattern so if you haven't seen that yet please go down to my channel or i'm going to leave the link at the description box so if it's your first time viewing my channel please like share and subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification button and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always supporting my channel so let's start so i cut out all my pattern in my previous video so i've gone ahead and i've cut out all my patterns this is the lace for the skirt part of the front pattern so i'm going to bring my skirt pattern for the front part and i'm going to spread it open so i cut exactly the same thing on my lace my lace and my skirt is the same measurement the same size next thing i'm going to do is to place my fabric and i'm going to take the lace and i'm going to spread it on it after doing that i'll go ahead and i will pin it down after pinning it down i'm going to top stitch the lace on my fabric so the reason why i'm doing this right now is because my lace is soft and i'm going to turn it together with my lining also make sure the front part of the lace is facing upwards so i'm done top stitching my lace on the skirt's front part and this is what i have next i will be bringing the overlapping skirt and i'll be sewing at this part so i'll bring the lining to turn it up so remember like i said i won't sew the sides i'll just sew at the lower part and leave the both sides open so i'm done sewing this part so what i'm going to do right now is to flip it over to the right side after flipping it to the right side, so this is what I have and I will go ahead and I will iron this part so that it's going to relax very well. After ironing, I'm going to place the overlapping skirt on top of the main skirt for the front pattern. But before I do that, I'm going to fold the skirt, the overlapping skirt into two and I'm going to notch to find the center of the pattern. After notching the overlapping skirt, I'm going to fold the main skirt fabric and I'm going to also notch it. The reason why I'm doing this is to find the middle of the skirt. After notching the both skirts, I'm going to place them together, the notched part meeting the other notched part of the skirt. That is the center of two of the skirt pattern meeting together. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to pin it down. Then I'll go over to the sewing machine and I will top stitch it with half inch. After top stitching it, this is what I have. So the next step is to turn it up with my lining. So at my lining, I minus two and a half inch from the original length of the skirt. So the reason why I did this is to have a turn up effect at the lower part of the skirt. Remember, we added two inches to the main skirt length. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to place this part meeting the other part and I'm going to sew with half inch. So I've joined it with half inch at the lower part and this is what I have. So the next thing I'll do is to flip my lining this way towards my main fabric. So from that half inch I sewed, I'm going to measure about 1.5 inches down. Remember I added 2 inches to my skirt so that's what we are trying to remove. And we are going to use it to form a turn up effect for the skirt. So after that half inch I sewed, I'm going to measure about 1.5 inch and I'm going to flip my material this way. And after doing that, I'm, I will make sure I pin it down. After pinning it down, so I'll go over to the other side of my skirt. And whatever I do to this side also, I'm going to repeat it on the other side after that half inch i'm going to measure about 1.5 inches and i'm going to fold it down this way and i'll pin it down also 
So by the time you're done doing this, you're going to notice that your lining and your fabric will align at the end. It will become the same size at the end. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to pin down my fabric on the lining and I'm going to sew with half inch. So after top stitching or sewing my skirt, this is what my front skirt pattern looks like. So as you can see, I have that turn up effect at the lower part and my skirt also aligns. So the next thing I'm going to do is to turn it up to the right side. So I'm done turning it to the right side and this is what I have. I'm going to flip it to the wrong to the back of the skirt and this is what I have. As you can see, I have a turn up effect at the lower part. So the next step is to also turn out my skirt pattern for the back. So also for my skirt pattern, for the lining, I also went ahead to take out two and a half inches i'm going to place my lining and fabric and i'm going to sew with half inch at the end so after sewing it this is what i have so the next step is to create that turn up effect at the lower part so what i'm going to do right now is to measure 1.5 inches after the half inch that i have sewed already just like i did for the front pattern after doing that i'm going to pin it down so whatever I do for this part of the skirt, I'm also going to do it for the other part of the skirt also. So after doing that, I'll go ahead and I will sew with half inch round it and sew with half inch at this part. So after sewing, this is what I have and I'm going to open it up from this part. So for the other part of the skirt also, this is what you're also going to do. After this, I'll be moving over to the upper part of the dress. Going over to the back pattern, I'm going to open up my pattern. I've cut out a gum stay for the back part. So what I'm going to do right now is to open the lining up and I'm going to place gum stay on it and I'll go ahead and I will iron the gum stay on top of the lining. And like I said earlier for my back, I won't be adding yoke to mine. But if you want to add yoke to yours, you can also do that. So going over to the front of the pattern, I'm just going to open up my pattern. After opening the center piece, I'm going to open the other sides too. So after opening up my front pattern, this is what your pattern is going to be looking like. Next, what you're going to do is to place your wording on your front pattern if you're using wording at this point. But if you're not using a wording, you're going to go ahead and join your cup first before you attach your already made cup. So, because I'm using wording, I'll go ahead and iron it. So, after ironing it, I'm just going to join it with half inch from this point. After joining the other side, I'll go ahead and I'll also join this side with half inch too. Going over to my lining piece. So, for my lining, I'm going to place my gum stay on my fab on my lining sorry and i'm going to iron my gum stay on it after i'm done ironing the gum stay on the lining i'm going to go ahead and i will join it just the same way i joined the fabric i'm going to join it with half inch from the top to the end and also for the other side of the lining. So after joining the front pattern, this is what I have for the front. So I'll go ahead and I will notch this part so that it's going to be very relaxed. So if you're working with a thick wording, I'll advise you to trim at the upper part a bit. 
if you're working with an already made cup you're going to find your underboss which is here and you're going to stitch the end of your cup there and then you're going to stitch the upper part of your cup at this point so i'm going to bring out my lining piece and this is what i have after joining it so i'm going to go ahead and i will notch it and iron it also so going to my back piece i've gone ahead to iron the gum stay on the lining part so what i'm going to do right now is to turn it with the fabric so i'm going to sew the neckline and the sides and i'm not going to sew the armhole area so the next part i'll be working on is the yoke area so for my yoke i cut out two pieces so you can go ahead and just use a single piece for your yoke and then use a bias to turn the neckline or you can just leave the neckline that way so what i'm going to do is to place both of them together and i will sew the neckline after sewing the neckline i'm just going to bring it and show you what I so i'm done sewing my neckline and i've trimmed it off a bit so i'm going to flip it to the other side so this is what i have so i'm going to top stitch on this part so that it's not going to shift while attaching it to the body of my dress so the next thing i'll do is to take it and i'll find the center and place the center of the yoke on it so from this point i'm just going to pin it so it's advisable to pin it if you're finding it difficult to sew with that way it will be more easier for you to join your yoke to the body of the dress so after joining the other parts i'm going to also pin the other part of the yoke to the other part of the dress so after pinning this is what i have on this side then i'm going to go over and i will pin the other side too so after pinning the yoke to the dress this is what it will be looking like at this point so there are two ways of joining your yoke to your dress so it's either you sew it half inch at this point and then cover it up with your lining or you're going to pin your yoke to your fabric and then pin your lining together at once and you're going to sew after pinning this is the effect you're going to be having at this side so i'll go ahead and i will also do for the other side and go over to the sewing machine and i will sew on it with half inch so i've gone over to the sewing machine and i have joined it and i've gone ahead to notch this part so this is what i have this is what it looks like after joining so the next thing i'm going to do is to join the sides to do that i'm going to flip it to the other side and i'm going to join the sides and leave the armhole area so after joining it this is what i have on this side next step is to find the middle of the dress so i'm going to fold it this way and i'm going to notch the center so i'm going to bring my skirt over and i'm going to fold it into two i'm going to find the center and i will also notch it back again so at this point i'm going to let the notch part of my skirt and the notch part of my upper part meet and i'm going to join it with half inch so the reason why i'm doing this is to get the center point so for my back i'm going to open what i have so i'll be also joining the upper part of the back pattern to the skirt part of the back pattern so for the upper part of my pattern after turning it up i went ahead to sew the dart so i'm going to join it to the lower part and for the skirt also i'm going to be leaving a zipper allowance and i'm going to stitch it down and then i'm going to slit at the back of the dress so after joining the dress this is what i have so i'm going to flip it to the wrong side and also show you what i have i went ahead to attach zip to the back also so the next step we're going to do is to join the shoulder of the dress 
So to join the shoulder, I'm going to place the shoulder meeting at both sides. So you're going to place one this way and you're going to flip the other one and you're going to use it to cover it. So after flipping it, you're just going to sew with half inch. And also for this side, you're going to place your shoulder meeting each other and then you're going to take one and you're going to flip it to the other side and then you're going to sew with half inch at the top after flipping it. So this is to conceal the joining at the shoulder. After joining it, I'm going to draft the sleeve for the dress. So for my sleeve measurement, I'm going to measure from my shoulder to elbow and shoulder to down to the length of my sleeve. So for what I folded my sleeve with is my armhole side conference divided by two and I added one inch allowance. You can go ahead and add half. So I'm going to take my tape and I'll measure from the shoulder down to the armhole area of one side of the dress. So the reason why I'm doing this is for the armhole of the sleeve not to exceed the armhole of the dress and is the fastest and easiest method of drafting a basic sleeve. So whatever I measured at one side of the sleeve, I'm just going to make sure I have it down there and I'm going to trace it out. After tracing it out, I'll go ahead and mark it out again because I'm making use of a pencil so that it's going to be very visible for you to see. So at my shoulder to elbow, I'm going to measure my elbow round and I'm going to mark whatever measurement I have there. Afterwards, I'm going to add half inch for sewing allowance. Then at the down part of my sleeve, I'm going to measure what I have at the at that point and I'm going to add half inch for sewing allowance. Next, I'm going to place my tape and I'm going to connect all the lines forming my sleeve. So afterwards, I'm going to cut out my pattern. So at this point, if you find my tutorial very interesting and educative, please hit on the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification button to get new updates from my channel whenever I post new videos. So I'm done drafting the basic sleeve. So I'm going to draft the other sleeve of the dress. The sleeve length I used for this is 10 inches and I went ahead to add 2 inches down to the pattern. But after sewing, I noticed that my sleeve was a bit too big and I reduced my sleeve. So at this point, you can go ahead and reduce your sleeve to avoid having excess or your sleeve bigger than what you want. So to get your sleeve length is you're going to place your tape on the front side of your armhole and you're going to pass it to your hand to the back side of your armhole and you're going to add few inches to it. So I'm just going to mark about half inches at the lower part and I'm going to connect it down. So I'm just trying to create a little design on the sleeve. After doing that at the lower part, I'm also going to do the same thing, mark half inch and I'm going to slant it back to my sleeve. Later, I'm just going to cut out that half inch that I marked out at that point. So I'm going to place my basic sleeve on the lace and I'm going to cut out. Then for the other sleeve, I went ahead to cut it out on my fabric and I added half inch by the side and at the other end of the pattern so what i'm going to do right now is that i'm going to cut out a gum stay for my sleeve and i'm going to also cut out lining for my sleeve so the reason why i'm attaching a gum stay to the sleeve is for it to stand or give it slight structure so you can go ahead and attach a sewable burning if you want your sleeve to be standing very well so I'll go ahead and cut out the gum stay and I'm going to iron it to the lining part of my sleeve. I'm done sewing my sleeve and this is what I have. So just like I said, my sleeve was too long. So what I'm going to do right now is to reduce it. 
so to do that i'm just going to remove few inches from my sleeve and i'm going to cut it out so after cutting it out the next step we are going to do is to be attaching my sleeve so i'm going to notch the middle part of my basic sleeve after doing that i'll be attaching the off shoulder sleeve first so while attaching it, I'll make sure it doesn't reach the end of the sleeve. So at first, when I attached it, I placed it to the end of the armhole. But I noticed that after attaching my basic sleeve, it was a bit difficult for me to shape the dress. So what you're going to do right now is while pinning it, you're not going to let the dress touch the ending part of your sleeve you're just going to leave about one inch to shape the armhole side so i'll also flip to the other side and i'm going to attach the sleeve to that part just like the way i did for this part also i've joined it and this is what i have so remember do not join your sleeve to the end because at the end I readjusted my sleeve. I took it up by one inch. So to attach your second sleeve, you're going to flip this one up this way. After flipping that one up, what you're going to do is to take the second sleeve, which is the lace part, and you're going to place the middle of the shoulder to the middle of the sleeve. And you're going to sew with half inch to the end of the both sides so as you can see the sleeve is aligning at each end and you're going to sew to the end so after sewing this is what i have so just like i said i readjusted my sleeve and i left about one inch at that point to shape my armhole and the other sleeve so the next thing i'm going to do next is to shape the dress so to shape the dress, I turned it to the wrong side. So I also went ahead to pin it so that it's going to align before shaping. So I'm going to place my tape from my shoulder to bust and I'll mark. From my shoulder to bust, I'm going to mark my shoulder to under bust. After marking my shoulder to under bust, I'm going to mark my shoulder to waistline. Then after marking my shoulder to waistline, I'm going to bring down my tape and I'll mark 7 inches to get my hip line. So for a much taller person, you can go ahead and use 8 inches. So the next thing I'm going to do is to shape my bust here. So you're going to make sure the joining will be at your nipple to nipple point. So what I'm going to do is to measure what I have there. So what I have at that point is 7 inches. So my bust circumference is 33 divided by 2, I have 16 and a half. So that's 16 and a half, I will be minusing the 7 inches I have from the 16 and a half. So I will have 9.5 inches. So minusing it from the tape, I'm going to just count back. After counting back, what I have is still 9.5 inches. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to share the 9.5 into 2 for the other remaining side of the bustier at my bust point. So sharing 9.5 into 2, I have 4.75. So I'm not going to mark exactly that 4.75 because I want my bust area to be tight. I'll go ahead and mark 4.5 inches. So if you don't really like your bust area to be tight, you're just going to mark your normal measurements. After doing that, we'll be moving over to the underbust. So I'm going to measure what I have at the middle of my underbust. And I have 5.5. So my underbust circumference is 28. 28 divided by 2 inches. I have 14. So what I'm going to do is that 14 inches minus the 7 inches I have at the center. I have 8.5 and I will be sharing that 8.5 into two sides of my under bust. So dividing it into two, I have 4.25 and I'm just going to mark four inches at both sides. So the reason why I'm doing this is that I want my under bust also to be tight. 
with this it will give the dress a firm look and it will make it look snatched so i'm going to measure my waistline so whatever i have at my waistline i have 21 after measuring it and my waist circumference is 28 28 divided by 2 i have 14 so 21 that i measured on the material minus 14 i have 7 inches so i'm going to be sharing 3.5 at both sides of my waist so after marking that 3.5 i'll go ahead and just mark out 14 inches so if you measure the other part you still have 3.5 inches so i'm going to measure what i have at the hip circumference after measuring what i have i'm going to divide my hip circumference into two then whatever i have my hip is 40 divided by 2 i have 20. so whatever i have on the hip part i'm going to be minusing 20 inches from it also just like i did at the waistline and i'm also going to mark so going down to the lower part of my gown pattern i'm going to be minusing two inches at both sides just to give the dress a fitted look at the lower part so if you don't like yours to be so fitted you can go ahead and mark 1.5 inch or one inch at both sides of the lower part of the gown so after marking that i'm going to join my line from my bust point down to my under bust then to my waistline and down to my hip so at my hip i'll be ignoring my hip a bit to avoid having air at the hip part of my dress so at the armhole part you can decide to extend what you have at the bust line or you can place your tape and measure your armhole circumference so whatever i do to this side i'm also going to do to the other side then i'll go over to the sewing machine and i will shape so i'm done sewing and we have come to the end of today's tutorial if you find this video very interesting and educative don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't subscribed share and also leave your comments at the comment section and also remember to turn on your notification button to get new updates whenever I post on my channel.